Ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, uh, obviously, it's uh, Tuesday for everybody else, but this is Thursday for us, a game week. Uh, kind of been living that schedule since Friday, which was our first first day of practice, like a Sunday of game week. So really excited the way they've approached it. Um, you know, we all have made this point. We had 120 players come to camp. 45 of those guys have never been with us for our, for a fall football game. So this has been a kind of a learning experience, not just for our coaches, our players, but our coaches. Uh, but do we do have a lot of experienced players that have played here, know our routine, know how we do things. Today was a Thursday practice, which is a little bit different. It's a lot of tempo, a lot of quick uh, transition. We work all phases of the kicking game, uh, a lot of uh, communication, uh, football specific, end of half, end of game, right area, goal line, uh, uh, coming out, early downs, you name it. Um, and then also in the kicking game. So really good concentration practice. Uh, for us, uh, uh, from a clearance standpoint, everybody uh, that we expected to play, uh, and going back to our last time we talked, there isn't anybody that's being ruled off from the game. There are a couple guys that got in here in the last three or four days that have passed all the tests and everything going forward. So unforeseen, even Kevin Wington, who rolled his ankle up a little bit, um, we didn't expect to have him for the game, but he got cleared in practice today and looked really good. Give a lot of credit to him to battle back and put himself in a position to help the team. So um, really, really excited for this group. Um, tremendous, I've said it all week, right? Tremendous respect for Coach and, and what Eastern Illinois has uh, done since he came there, I think, two years ago to uh, have that first year and to build off that and have the season they did a year ago. This whole roster is uh, just chuck full of juniors, seniors, really seniors and grads. Um, so I know they're a very experienced group on both sides of the ball. Their signal caller is a guy that makes everything go, a really impressive athlete, a very, very good quarterback and a good group of receivers. So we got a tremendous challenge on Thursday night, but excited to see where we go. So with that, I'll open up questions. Coach, this is year 16 for you as head coach. Yeah. Think about how you feel going into the opener as now as opposed to like back in the day when you first started. You know, a great question, but I think because it's been so many, there's been an evolution. I don't think there's any doubt every year presents its own set of challenges and unique scenarios. You know, you open up with a certain type of opponent, offense, defense, um, but coaching is coaching. Um, you got to adapt to the times. I think that's the biggest challenge, right, is just dealing with the things that college football brings now, the roster attrition, the uh, uh, NIL world, the uh, portal world. Listen, we're having conversations just as much with our third string right tackle as we are with our first string right tackle because someday he's going to be the starter, right? And there's a whole lot of things going on in college football. I just had a couple of Zoom calls last week, sit on a couple of committees where you're talking about things that affect the 2025 class. So uh, it's part of it. It's fun. It's enjoyable. I've said it all along, right? I got the greatest job in the world. And to be able to do it every day, I'm excited to get to Thursday for a variety of reasons. But it's finally just a chance to watch our guys play football against somebody else and see what happens. Are you, are you nervous? Are you nervous before a game? I don't, I don't know if there, I would, I mean, I guess everything is a, a, a definition that you hold. Like, I think there's anxiousness, right? I think there's a, a lot of things that you haven't seen before. You're anxious to see it. I don't ever really, there's things that, uh, that I think even this past weekend, you know, one of the things I did uh, after the weekend with those week zero games, I, I literally took a 16 play edit. You know, I took the uh, uh, Nevada SMU game, which probably wasn't on everybody's bingo card, right? Like that they were watching that. I was sitting there late uh, Saturday night watching it and, there was probably eight to 10 game day scenario things that are really hard to emulate in practice that uh, happened in that game, which is really good. Huge momentum swing, Nevada had it early. Uh, they kind of did some things starting with a, a third and 10 incomplete with a, a tripping call that really kind of changed the game and swung the momentum back to SMU and then some end of game scenarios that, that played out. So that was really good teaching. Uh, they had a safety on a fumbled fair catch on the one yard line. So all kinds of just shit that really just kind of stuff to bring back. <laughs> yeah. That was a game that was closer than people thought. Is that kind of just a reason why everybody should take, just take one game at a time? Is that kind of like a good example? I, I don't know. It was oh, the Nevada SMU favorite or Nevada? Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, um, I, I just, I just know from programs. I really don't know what they return. Obviously, I know the SMU head coach. I know Rick Lashley just for a little bit from being around him. I know the uh, uh, Nevada head coach is a very, very accomplished special teams kind of defensive guy. Um, known for being kind of a tough guy, having great success. I think it was at Montana, right? So I don't know who was favored. I just know the way the game played out uh, was pretty impressive. I think early games, right? Like um, you can take records, levels, divisions, everything out. I, I, I said this the other day, right? Um, I remember we had the number one defense at the end of the year when I was at Kansas State. But at the beginning of the year, we played this team called Eastern Illinois. We had a guy by the name of Tony Romo who went out and chucked it all around the field, right? And, and you know, you had that moment. Um, two years prior to that, I was a young linebacker coach at Iowa, and we talked about – uh, uh, knocking out their starting quarterback because they had this freshman by the name of Rossesberger who's like 6'4", 250. We're like, we're going to get this guy in the game, and he proceeded to get in the game and do what he did, right? Um, so you always have those unknowns, which I think is part of the cool thing about college football, but uh, Eastern Illinois needs 
uh, no respect from from us, right? They 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 that what they put on the field, right? They have uh, shown what they're capable of doing, and and our guys have respected it from when we started watching that film last spring to where we are now. So. How are Carson Goda and Daniel Brown? I mean, I think maybe we saw them limited. Yeah, Carson got 100 percent cleared. Was all good. Um, I think Carson probably for us will be involved in a lot of things offensively, some things special teams wise. Daniel Brown cleared. He's been with us the last four days. Um, you know, I think in that room, uh, Alec, Gabe, Seth, Daniel. JoJo Hayden has had a really good fall camp, so I think at that outside linebacker room, you're going to see a lot of guys play various roles. How's it kicking? We haven't. Updated yeah, so um, yeah, so David Alano will for sure be our field goal kicker. I think Chow will be our, our kickoff guy, and, and he will be our punt guy. There may be some mix and match based on the game scenario. Um, Lane Lane Hansen is by far, you know, our, our, our snapper that's established himself pretty good. Hugh holds. Um, yeah, so the kicking game has probably kind of manifested itself out pretty good, but a really good competition between David and. And uh, uh, Chow, and then also uh, Breezy's probably had as good a camp punting and kicking, so he'll kind of factor into both roles. With whatever you saw in week zero, with the clock, clock, new clock rules, yeah. did it work out the way you thought it would? You know, it's a small sample. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how things play out. Um, you know, there's a couple of these subtle changes that I think until you see a, a, a big grouping of – I look at the NFL kickoff thing, right? Everybody's kind of talking about that. There's just such – I think even in the preseason games, like – it plays out differently well in a regular season, so it's going to be interesting. These non-conference openers, right, and teams that don't have common opponents, once like kind of how these new rules play out. I think because of the clock, for sure, at the end of half, you're probably going to have more points scored than ever before. And I think at the end of the game, there's going to be scenarios where teams may score a little faster than they should, which puts you know an, a, another team on the field to have a chance to beat you, right? So uh, a little bit of everything. I'm really intrigued to see how the coach of player thing plays out. Um, uh, uh, you know, and in the sideline tablets, we've been talking to people that have been involved already in game days uh, just to kind of see how those play out. We're at night, right? So um, there's some teams that have had issue with glare, but that takes care of it. We've already practiced that. But um, and then also, I think the big one, just the, the coach, the player between the, the play caller and, you know, especially on the offense side and defense side between those two guys. How have you seen that tight end room kind of? Rebound, I guess, after Cole's loss, and I'm assuming we know most of them. Maybe yeah, Cole was with us in the spring, but you know he really hadn't yeah. been involved, and we were kind of just getting a feel for where he was there. I think, uh, without a doubt, Tanner Arkin, um, really since last fall to where he is, he's the leader of that room. He's a captain. Uh, the way people talk about him, I think, has been super impressive. Henry Boyer, you know, last year a lot of you didn't realize it, but he actually had a preseason or a, a fall camp injury that um, we knew he was going to have to have surgery on his shoulder and it was just going to wait. He opted to wait till the end of the year. So we kind of had to nurse him through the entire season. Obviously, Tip was a mainstay there. Tip was so different from everybody else. We really ran a lot of 11 personnel and it was all Tip, right? And those other guys, even Tanner didn't get a lot of reps. So I see this more by committee between Tanner. Uh, Henry Boyer's had a good fall camp. Goda has been a guy that's popped in there. Uh, Jake Fortney is a, a, a non-scholarship tight end that we've acted in there. Uh, Clayton Leonard, uh, we call him Leonard, right? Uh, he's a guy that has popped down to the tight end room and I think can bring in some stuff uh, in the big personnel groupings, which we're excited to see. Coach, you mentioned earlier with uh, new clock management and challenges that bring every every uh, season. What do you feel that you have an advantage as a former NFL coach? And have you, with the new two minute warning, uh, have you imp implemented any strategy to um, use that? Yeah, uh, great question. I think. Um, you know, the, the thing that the NFL has is they have tablets, but they're still photos. So um, really, this this is uncharted waters, right? So in the NFL, no matter lo how long they've had, and I was in there three years using stills, you're kind of intrigued with it when you first get it, but you kind of get used to it. But you aren't able to play, push a button, and watch a play five times in a row without ever stopping. That is a whole, that's a game changer. That's a, that's a whole different level of critique, in-game in adjustments, ability to expose or find or... or, or or identify issues that maybe your opponent hasn't seen or does see. Um, I think the coach to player thing is going to be the most similar, but I wasn't a play caller uh, in the NFL. I, I listened to it, I heard it, but I watched guys, and that's why during the out of season, you know, uh, Barry and Aaron, I took them to NFL camps to, to, to learn and hear from coordinators that learned how to play or how to uh, manage the uh, coach to player, and then we've used them all file camp. Uh, but I think that's a one of, that's probably the biggest caveat that I think a lot of people don't realize is probably kind of a trial and error until they get used to each other. One more to move Clayton Leonard to the tight end. What, and what do you like about him? Maybe you know, out. Clayton's been impressive since we got him. Um, he's a kid from right down the road, just super, super uh, uh, loves Illinois football. Nobody tries harder than him. I know it's been frustrating for him. Uh, he was in a group of freshman old linemen that came in that kind of, you know, uh, uh, took a lot of pride in being old lineman when they got here, and it hasn't really manifested. One Joey transferred out, right, and Clayton is here. and. Uh, and obviously uh, Hunter's into the mix a little bit, so it's kind of been a little bit of 
uh, uh, haven't maybe seen as much as they wanted to to get on the field. But Clayton's uh, attitude, demeanor, waiver, he just can't really get as big as he wants. So um, I got a kick the first day we moved him to tight end. He came out with his jersey rolled up and had a 41 on, right? And uh, had a, a, a unique posture, shall we say, walking out. And um, But the player, the tight ends have taken to him. He's learned very, very well. Had to, you know, from being an old lineman that they told you to play to a tight end that's got to see the play come from the sideline. So he went through a lot. And, and I, I just I just can't say uh, how much I appreciate him and, and what he's been able to do and put himself in that position. Could you settle on this one defensively for the helmet? Have you said that? Miles will be, for the most part, will be in the back end. Um, but Miles will be the first green dot. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks,